Hey Flosstube, how you doing? Let's state the obvious first. I've got a new channel name and the dog is snoring already. <laughs> she knows her role. I swear she was not snoring until I started filming. But anyways, um, new channel name. I also changed my Instagram to the exact same one just because I really wanted them both to be the same. And um, my original channel name, if you've seen any of my videos prior to this one, it was Twisted Yogi 13, which was my gamer tag and my Instagram name and all that. And I thought it was, you know, fine at first, but then the more I got to watching other floss tubes, I really kind of wanted it to be kind of stitchy related. And then when I started my Instagram, because my normal Instagram, the Twisted Yogi 13 one, is private and it's locked down and I kind of keep that one just for personal stuff. And so I decided just to make another Instagram exclusively for the stitching. So I thought, let's keep it with the Twisted Yogi thing and let's do Twisted Stitcher. So Twisted Stitcher shockingly was available. So I just like took that. And then I noticed on one of my pictures that I'd put up, someone commented something that kind of made me like raise an eyebrow. And it was, are you, I think you've mistaken me from, for someone else. And that was my first kind of clue that there might already be a Twisted Stitcher. <laughs> um, and then I was watching um, a floss tube. I think it was like on autoplay. And I'm just kind of stitching away. And I hear someone mention Twisted Stitcher. And I was like, what? And turns out there is a Twisted Stitcher. And she does lots of finishing videos. And for future me, and for the sake of sparing confusion for you guys, I decided to just nip that in the bud now and I started trying to come up with a new channel name. Well, that was a lot of fun, let me tell you, <laughs> because I really like Twisted Stitcher because I felt like it kind of, I don't know, suited me because I feel like, you know, I'm not your typical Stitcher. So I thought, oh, well, Twisted Stitcher, you know, cool. And there's there's reasons why I like Twisted Yogi too, kind of for same, same-ish. Um, so then I thought, well, maybe something witchy, wicked, sea witch, all that's been taken. So thanks Ursula for making Sea Witch super popular, which I wanted kind of Sea Witch because that was my, on the Teresa Wentzler bulletin board days, that was my username there. So I thought maybe I can go with like Sea Witch or something like that. So <laughs> long story short, Sharky Stitcher is what I went with because it's ocean themed. I love my sharks, then my boys. I don't know what I'm going to do with this poster. I kept intending on putting it up there and then like once I get more stitching frame, putting that up there, but I don't know like the shark so and now it kind of goes with the theme so maybe they'll just stay up there so but and it's funny too because I, I thought it was ironic that sharky stitcher was available because lots of people don't like sharks which makes me sad because I love sharks um that was a potential career path for me I was going to be a marine biologist and study sharks part, part of why I have the obsession with stitching sea life mermaids and all that fun stuff so anyways I thought it kind of went with the channel I like too that sharky kind of rhymes with snarky I feel like I'm a little snarky sometimes so I just thought it went so anyways there's that out of the way that's why I changed it I just you know future thing and it has nothing to do with it it's funny I changed this and then the next day was the announcement that stitch mania the Facebook group and pretty much the event was going to be doing their last mania. So a new group, Stitch All The Things, um, started, and then there was some controversy erupting in there about that channel being confused with Christine's Stitch All The Things Floss Tube channel. So it's funny that that just kind of happened at the same time, had nothing to do with the other, it was just pure coincidence, you know, but um, just thought that was kind of interesting. But yeah, anyways, this is more a future me, thing. I just want to keep things from being confusing that and I wanted to make things more stitching related and I thought it was confusing having the YouTube channel be one thing and the Instagram be another. So I'm just making it matchy matchy and I'm working on buttoning up some of my old videos, some of the descriptions, uh, linking Instagram and whatnot on there. Um, so yeah, that's just, that's just the housekeeping for the day, I guess you'd say. So yeah, the name change, Sharky Stitcher, I like it. Hope you guys like it too. So I think it's cool. <laughs> but anyways, so I finally got my one, two, three stitch haul. So I think I will show that to you guys as well. A um, few other little things that I'm kidding up. Got some progress on Serengeti, nothing, you know, mind blowing or anything. And I've been thinking a lot about my Chatelaine wish list because the sale will be in April. I mean, I know that's a ways away, but <laughs> 
you should see the total for um, my wish list. So I have some decisions to make and I need the time for that and or the time to save the money <laughs> for it. So, um, but also um, I told you guys in my last video that I would show you my tattoo and I'll just go ahead and do that now. So if you don't like tattoos, disclaimer, I'm about to show a tattoo and it's in a spot where I have other tattoos. So this might take a minute, you know, and if you have anything to say negative about tattoos, don't bother. They're on me forever. And if you don't like tattoos, don't get them. That's all I got to say. Um, if you want to say, I don't like tattoos, but yours is pretty, that's fine. You know, whatever. That's cool. Just no tattoos on girls are ugly. Tattoos, blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear it. It's your comments going to get deleted. So don't even waste your time, you know? So sorry to be that way, but us tattooed people, we, we hear that stuff a lot. So unfortunately, you know, it's just something we have to do. But so I told you that the tattoo was, um, I got my beloved fish scissors, which, oh gosh, I love these. Now these are funny because these are like the multicolored scissors, but for some reason this one side is just blues, purples, and greens, and I freaking love it. And these scissors are so just, oh, they're just so good. Mm, I just, I love them. So I got them in the tattoo and she got the color so good. Like I even had told her she could simplify it. Like you could, you didn't even have to do like the fish pattern. You can simplify it, but she kind of just recreated them. So that was really cool. And then I got a Peacock Clay by Kim needle minder with the needle in the thread. Now, this isn't a weird spot for me to show you guys. So um, you probably won't see all of it, but I'll, I'll do my best for you. <laughs> so it's on my knee bend here. And I had other tattoos in the area. So here it is. No Clay by Kim with the Peacock. And here's my scissors. She fitted into this weird spot that I got right here. And then she added some purple sparkles. And then the needle is right here. And the thread's back here, but uh, <laughs> I don't think I can show you that. By the way, this part sucked being tattooed. Just just going to put that out there. So yeah, my little, my little dragon. He's so cute. I've always wanted a dragon tattoo, but I don't like the typical um, dragons. Now, I will say this tattoo's super bright, and these ones look faded. That's Jill Valentine from Resident Evil, my favorite video game. And then I've got my elephant with butterfly wing ears and some plumerias. This is kind of an Asia-themed tattoo. And then I got one down on my foot, you can't see. But um, this one's super bright because it's fresh. Also because these are all done by different artists. This chick is super good at pumping color in. Like that's just her thing. She also did the, uh, I have a shark on my ribs and she did that one. But look at my scissors, they're so cool. I know it's kinda, it's still got that Healy sheen to it. It's probably gonna peel again. I tend to peel like three times. There's the big heavy peel. Then there's the light peel, and then there's like your general exfoliation type peel. So, yeah, I'm super happy with it. I love the colors. Really pretty. And it filled that weird, I just had this weird blank spot, and I didn't like it. So I thought, let's put some stitching implements in there. So, okay, tattoo time over. If you didn't want to look, if you're like stitching away, and you're like, I'm not going to look while there's a tattoo on the screen. Tattoo's gone, so we good? We good? Except for, you know, the ones that you see all the time anyways. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I like that. I'm happy with it. <laughs> and okay. Then kitting up some mirrors. So part of this was in my one, two, three stitch order. So I think I will just go over the one, two, three stitch order and just come across the mirrors as, as I do. Um, this is one thing that I ordered is I'm kitting up a not typical design for me. And let me just show you these colors. Ooh. And a lot of these are threads I haven't worked with before, except for some SNC silks, which I'm used to them being in the, the twisted bundle. So I guess they're doing them like this now, which is cool. They seem softer too. I don't know what that's about, but that's an SNC silk as well. Gentle art, simple, simply wool. I've never used that before. And I know there was another thread that they were out of stock on, so I need another thread. But this, let me show you the project this is for. It's a Quaker design, which I typically don't do. Quaker Gone Haunted. Now, I love this design because it reminds me of Salem. And I had told you the last time I showed you guys this, uh, it reminds me of Salem because of this magnet that I had bought when I was in Salem. So here's the magnet. <laughs> 
And this is a rubbing from a tombstone, not from one of the accused witches or, you know, people that were executed during that time. It's just someone from, you know, the time frame. I can't remember the guy's name. I'll, if I can look it up, I'll put it in the comments. But you see how it kind of looks like this little motif here. So this just reminds me of Salem. So I think I will probably maybe take out like this leaf here because it's kind of repetitive and put uh, 1693 in there for the year of the Salem witch trials. Fabric wise, I kind of like the pictured fabric, you know, and then there's all these lovely greens and grays, you know, so I'm kind of digging that. And I'm also digging maybe making it sparkly with some opalescent fabric, which I'm usually good for. So there was one thing that was in my order. And again, there's one color that I'm missing that I'll have to get. Then this is just all fun stuff for the most part. Um, I've really liked working with silk lame. So I got this silk lame. Look how pretty. It's like a nice periwinkle purple silk with sparkles so it's yeah it's super smooth but it's got the sparkle so that's nice this is just a treasure braid that i thought and that's pretty gimme <laughs> and some more silk lame in a turquoise color so yeah i just bought those for fun because i like sparkle and now these two work for fun as well but <sighs> so um I had told you guys in a previous video, I ended up buying Mirabella's Winter Queen because when I was looking at someone's finished design of it, realized it had whisper thread, you know, and she's the winter queen. queen. <laughs> so the whisper thread is like fur and I really love whisper thread and the texture it adds. So that's why I bought Winter Queen. Well, I then found that Autumn Queen also has whisper thread, but it's white. And I was kind of like, why can't we make it more like an autumnal color, like maybe fox fur or something instead of white, you know, snow white fur. You know, I thought that might be interesting. Now, again, I don't have that design. It's out of print and it goes for crazy prices. I did just purchase one off of a stash on load group, but it's kind of one of those where I'm like, am I going to get that chart or not? You know, because the seller's kind of making me feel a little sketchy about the whole situation. I paid by PayPal, so if there's a problem, I'll just dispute it, you know, but I ordered it, but I don't know when it's going to get here, so we shall see. Um, so I don't know where the whisper is and all that, and if a conversion would be good. So I just bought these two colors because they looked autumn autumnal. I don't have any of the other colors, so I don't know if these are close or whatever. Um, I do want them to be a little bit more orange, kind of more foxy colored. I thought this one was going to be really foxy looking, but it's not really so. But I like Whisper, so I don't mind having more colors of it. Okay, and then this was kind of a dumb buy. I don't know why I did it, but you know. <laughs> um, along with the other queens, uh, another queen I've been looking at is the Snow Queen. And she has Whisper Thread as well. Um, I really like... Uh, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World's conversion where she made her a redhead instead of a blonde. So I'm kind of, hmm, like, do I want to change her hair color? Because I will say, I'm not a Disney person, and with the blonde hair, she really has some Elsa vibes. So, you know, maybe I'll make her strawberry blonde. That way I'm not, like, copying the red thing. So, but I was looking at the chart, and for some reason... I decided not to get the chart, but I really wanted to get some of these beads. And it's because these are Mill Hill, but I, I've never used the Magnifica beads. And now that I'm looking at them, they look a lot like Delica's. So I think that's interesting. And then I had gotten these silver bugle beads. So I'm like, I don't know. They didn't have any of the metallics. They didn't have like a bunch of other stuff. So I thought, you know what, just get the beads and slowly start kidding that design up. So... <laughs> Um, okay, another Mirabella pretty much purchase. Um, let's see if I can show this without spilling everything. This is for Gypsy Queen, which I only have a mind to call Tribal Queen because Gypsy is a racial slur. So I got the beads for her. I also just bought a bunch of the floss for her too today, but it's still all in a bag. And there's another design that I bought floss for, so it's all intermingled. Um, but here she is 
I do not know what fabric I want to use for her. So I'm going to have to visit the pattern viewer, which is another, um, this is how I do it video thing. I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go over pretty much how to use pattern viewer. So that might be a good one is to let's go shopping for some tribal queen <laughs> fabric. So yeah, I got the beads for her and I also got the silks. They had all the silks that I need for her. Now, what they didn't have was the metallics. So I think they only had one metallic and I thought, you know, I'm probably going to forget which metallic that's for. So I'm just going to wait until the rest are back in stock. You know, um, Krennic was kind of low on stock because they had some sick people out. I think they're back now, but I noticed there was like a mad rush for Krennic metallic. So for some reason, those are really hard to find now. Um, this one's funny. So finally, I bought the Halloween fairy. <laughs> and what's funny about this, uh, there's a couple things that are funny about this. Um, I pulled it out. Um, let me read the back. I just think it's funny. While looking at her, note what color her wings are. Not so terribly frightful is she who flutters in the Hallow's Eve. One can hear her giggling as she plants her colorful tricks and treats. Are those violet wings part of her costume or are they real? She wears her black to keep you guessing. I'm assuming that should have said black mask to keep you guessing, but those wings definitely aren't violet. <laughs> but speaking of color discrepancies, so, um, I had gotten this and you know, I've seen this forever. I've been waiting to get it forever. I just don't know why I didn't buy it. So finally I'm like, you know what? Get it before it like goes out of print or something. And then you're gonna be mad that you can't get the Halloween fairy. It's my favorite holiday. I do really like the Easter egg fairy and the New Year's. I can't remember what that one's called. If it's New Year's or if it's, you know, something else uh, fairy, but so I'll probably get those. But um, so I finally decided to get it and I was expecting, you know, fall colors because this comes as a kit but let me show you the colors I was greeted with when I looked at this now I don't know how this will show up on camera we'll see now I guess you could say there's a fall but I'm seeing pink 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 melon and this orange is giving me creamsicle vibes not pumpkin vibes and I was like, whoa, that, where's the fuchsia go in? You know, cause look, just look at that. Like, I just felt like, is, is that right? Is, are these dye lots off? I know this has been out for a while. I'm like, have they changed the dye lots? Well, come to find, long story short, I went through all the colors. This color is not listed anywhere in there. Not for backstitch, not for nothing. So where this thing came from, <laughs> I have no idea. But when you take that color out, um, I don't know, for some reason that really fixed things for me. So I was like, oh, okay, I, I can kind of see it now. So I just thought that was funny. So who knows what I'm gonna do with this, but stash, <laughs> there we go. Okay, and then I got a boatload of fabric. Um, I mean, a boatload of, it's just a couple pieces. I got a lot of small pieces, so it wasn't like I spent a ton on fabric. One piece that I got that was big for a specific design, I had bought this for my son. He is a boat nerd. So I bought a piece of navy blue belled fast, and <laughs> this came with some navy Ada. And I have a mind to someday collect all the Ada that's in all the kits that I have, which is not a lot, but you know, still several pieces of Ada and do a giveaway with it because I don't like Ada. So, um, <coughs> excuse me, Whew. um, one fabric, which I am still waiting for my piece for Fairy Moon from Pictureless Plus Fabrics. Uh, hopefully that comes in the next month or so because we're working on the six month mark, you know, for me putting that order in. But a color that I love and I just wanted more of it is Da Vinci. Which this piece is a strange piece of Da Vinci because it's almost primarily purple. Let me show you this smaller piece. This piece is 
12 by 17 and this piece is 8 by 12. This is a perfect piece of Da Vinci because it's got the purples and orange. Pretty, pretty what you would expect. Whereas this one, the only spit of orange is right there. <laughs> So, but hey, I am a purple fan, so I'm okay with this, but I am curious if my Fairy Moon fabric comes, which is a piece of 32 count and this, or 30, 28 count, this is 32 count. I don't want to do Fairy Moon on 32 count because of all the dense beading, so I ordered 28 count Cashiel, which they don't have at Pictureless Plus. They did have a Belfast and it was tempting, but I resisted, and of course these are both opalescent because I love opalescent but because I'm a big purple fan I don't mind that this piece is missing some of the orange because I'll find something else for it so what was I thinking too oh yeah for this piece um you know my little sun dragon he's kind of covered in clay by Kim's at the moment but I think like maybe like a little little Teresa Wensler dragon like maybe I'll put stretch on here that'd be cool I haven't done stretch yet I have stretch the original colors I have him in the Fortunate Traveler chart, which is another thing I'm kind of getting up. Um, and then I have the, someone did a conversion on the Teresa Wensler bulletin board called Sunfire Stretch. And he was like red with fiery tones and there was a lot of metallics in it. I don't think I'll do that for this one, but maybe I can come up with my own conversion for that. So I think like, yeah, Little Dragon would be good for this piece. Uh, this piece I bought because I'm shopping for greens for the most part. Um, this is a picture of this plus fabric as well. And this is Valor, which I do really like this color. Um, there's a design I have in mind for this. It's a lavender and lace design. Is it Spirit Dancer or Earth Dancer? It's the one where she's got a parrot and she's got kind of uh, silvery hair, it looks like. But... I'd kind of like to maybe do her on this type color. And I was buying a lot of greens because I have a confession to make. <laughs> so um, I don't know if any of you guys noticed, but yes, I have Serengeti on the scroll frame as I did last time. And I had told you guys before that, that the next shy lane I was going to start was Rainforest Lace. Well, I ordered a big old piece of fabric for Rainforest Lace. I like the color. But, silly me, I have kind of decided that I would like to do that on an opalescent. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. But, um, so now I'm kind of shopping for which hue of green would I like to do that on. So, this color is possible, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm not with it just yet. Um, and then I got a couple of neutrals. And these are mostly, I got some really small pieces, kind of for small designs, but also I kind of just wanted some samples of Pictureless Plus. That and these are like super cheap. They're like, I don't know, four bucks or five, six bucks top, something like that. So they don't cost a whole lot. So I just kind of wanted to sample their colors. And this is Bramble. It's a nice neutral. And I've got a couple Teresa Wensler designs that I am kidding up. And I kind of want to do them on like a, you know, like this, like just kind of a neutral, but it's got some modeling on it. So I think this color would be good. That and this is kind of slightly like me looking at it. Let me hold it up here with this white and maybe you'll see it. It's kind of a gray, green, brown. Like just depends on how you kind of look at it. It can look a little green. Like here's a green next to this. So I don't know if you guys can get that effect, but I'm seeing a li little bit of green. Just, just a little bit. The darker parts look a little green to me. It looks kind of brown on camera. So I don't know how that'll show up for you guys. But yeah, nice neutral. And then just a plain neutral neutral. And I noticed I didn't have any of 32 count antique white Belfast. This is kind of a classic Teresa Wensler color. So I grabbed some of that. Because I've been wanting to do some small Teresa Wenslers. And then <laughs> this is a staple for me. White Opalescent Belfast. And I like to use this for uh, Victoria Sampler designs. Um, I'm wanting to do the Tropical Garden. It's like a little bell pool and I'm, I want to do it on Opalescent. So that's what I got that for. Then I got a piece of black just because it matches my heart. 
And then I got this lock, which this is more blue than I was expecting it to be, but I, I thought it was going to be more of kind of a green color. So I was kind of contemplating it for maybe a substitution for rainforest lace, but this is way too blue, kind of, um, well, it's lock, but it kind of reminds me of a dark spruce kind of blue. So, but it's a small piece, so it'll be good for like a small. This piece kind of threw me for a loop. <laughs> so this is confetti. And I think this was more multicolored in the picture. The only thing I can see is like a few little bits of green, but it's mostly very, very yellow. <laughs> it's like very, you guys can see it, it, it yellow, it dandelion yellow. So I don't know what I will do with this, but now I know what color confetti is. At least, you know, the yellowness. I think there was more like pinks and stuff too. So I was kind of looking for something sparkly. This color I love. And this is conifer. Yeah, conifer. Opalescent. Almost all these are opalescent. I should just stop buying plain fabric because I always want to use opalescence. But I love this color. And this was kind of the color I was thinking I wanted for reinforced lace because I was thinking I wanted something darker. But I held the bead pack up against it and I was like, no, the bead pack's got too many dark greens to where the beads would get lost. So while I love this color, it's not going on rainforest lace, but I'll do something with it. It's such a cool, dark, just, I mean, I think conifer is an appropriate, it's very pine colored and it looks pretty true to color on screen, at least for me. And then just a plain piece of raw opalescent because I used up my last piece of raw for that um, Halloween window design that I was doing. And I like using this, so yay. Um, so that was all in the one, two, three stitch order. So yes. Oh, um, I guess I'll go over. There's a, another Mirabilla I'm kidding up that was not in that order. I kind of decided to start kidding it up. Very idle. She's kind of big. So I thought I need to get her started. But I don't know. I love her. She's out of print. I got her on eBay fairly cheap. Like, if you watch, and I it, I got it for 20 bucks, and nobody countered me. I mean, I know you can find it for a lot more. Sometimes you see it on the Stash Unload groups. Rarely do I ever see it in, like, you know, so usually there's, like, five comments on it already. So you have to be quick, you know, with it. But, yeah, I got it on eBay for 20 bucks. Nobody countered me for some reason. Like, I just got lucky. So you can get lucky too if you're patient. So, but yeah, I really like her. This chart too, like I can tell how big it is by how thick this feels. So I know she's, she's a big girl. So basically kidding her up, kidding up Gypsy Queen, which I like to call Tribal Queen. Um, I'm kidding up, actually not kidding up. I fought with putting Serengeti on here and Queen Mermaid. So I'm getting ready to start Queen Mermaid. That's another this is how I do it video that I'm thinking of is going over my scroll frames and how I attach the Velcro. I think I'll do that when I put the fabric on for um, Queen Mermaid because I'm excited to start her because I really love her fabric. It's so pretty. So yeah, that's my the mirrors. I also made a list. So the yeah, Fairy Moon, once I get my fabric from Picture This Plus, it's taking forever. Um, once I get Queen Mermaid on the scroll frames, I'm going to get her started. Fairy Idol. Um, she, we need to visit the viewer. I'm not sure fabric-wise. I do think probably like a light mottled gray or something. Uh, I was thinking green for a while, but there's a lot of green elements in the background, and I don't want that to get lost in the fabric. I did think for a second that this color would be cool for her, but again, I think the background elements will get lost. Like there's this topiary tree here and like she's got a flower crown and stuff so I think that'll all get lost in this but I thought it would make the yellow pop um and she's got this cool kind of green in her wing so I thought eh, maybe just some gray but yeah I bought the floss for her as well as Gypsy Queen they didn't have all the colors though um so let's take a peek at Serengeti shall we let me remove my chart so I don't expose anything. 
Not that it would make sense. Any of you that have printed out a portion of a Shad Lane design know that probably showing a piece of it ain't gonna really reveal too much. So I am not quite done with part one, but I'm close. So here's that. Now these little squares, I was very excited to do these little squares because they look so cool, but damn, are they a pain in the ass. And that's because there's like a million little quarter stitches in here, which I don't mind, um, but we're talking like, on top of these like um, eyelets, there's like a quarter stitch here, a quarter stitch here, quarter stitch here, quarter stitch here, and it's a different color. So I'm like threading a new floss, doing eight quarter stitches, and then having to move on to the next square. And then the quarter stitches that I'm doing are next to a solid color or a solid stitch of a very similar color. So I'm like, why didn't I just, if I'd have known ahead of time, I would have just stitched it, you know, like the color that was already there and saved myself some grief. So the plan here is to finish these squares. Then I've got to do some metallic back stitching through here. I'm saving that because I hate back stitching. Well, not, not I don't hate back stitching. It's easy, but it's it gets a little monotonous sometimes. And then I'm going to bead the middle area. I'm gonna leave the big crystals off, but I'm gonna do all the beads because this part here is heavy beaded. There's a lot of beads in here. And there's a fair few beads in here as well. And then there's a little elephant scene right here, which looks fairly simplistic. So I haven't decided. Usually when I do a shad lane, I get the middle started before I'm allowed, you know, before I allow myself to rotate off. So technically, once I finish the beads here, the middle is done. But I really kind of want to get at least one elephant scene done because I feel like that's the first clue that this is like an African design or, you know, Serengeti being what it is. Cause right now you can't really tell much of what the theme is. I hear this is like a watering hole. That's why all the blue is in the middle. It's like a watering hole. But once these elephant scenes are done, there's these cool little grass huts that go around these squares. And I'm so excited to do them because they're very textured and I love that. So, but yeah, here's Serengeti. She's so big. <laughs> so yeah. She's coming along nicely. I haven't gotten to work on her as much as I would like. I've been really super busy with work because it's Valentine season, not so much right now, but it, you know, was, and that's, you know, money-making season for massage therapists. So there's that. Um, and then, so there's my, sh my Chatelaine that's on the bars. I really would like to make a goal to finish another Chatelaine, like a, one of the big mandalas this year. The closest I am to that is Misty Morning Vineyard. So I would love to finish that one. So I think after this one rotates off the bars, probably the plan is the next Chatelaine that goes on the bars will be Misty Morning Vineyard because you know, now I'm back to shopping for fabric for rainforest lace. I don't know, I'm ridiculous. <laughs> I do really wanna get that one started too though. But part of the issue was I had all my pages that I needed printed for Serengeti and Rainforest Lace, for some reason, I keep having issues with printing. I have three quarters of the center because this one, this, it's broken up into quarters. So I have to print each part of the middle and pretty much I like to tape it together so it all fits. And I'm missing one quarter. And for some reason, I keep having all these issues with getting it to print the right size. So because I don't have my chart ready to go because I'm conflicting on the fabric rainforest lace got jumped by Serengeti which Serengeti's been on the bars for quite a while anyway so I guess that was a fair fair enough turnabout so yeah and then let me go over I made my little wish list for Chatelaine because I do this thing where I'm like okay this is what I want for the sale and then the sale comes and I totally forget everything that I had made on my wish list and just for shock value, let me show you my total for everything that I would like to start like soonish, like this year. If I was being super indulgent, that's what I would order. But $1,300, eh, that's a little indulgent. So though my birthday is coming up next month, so I have a mind to pick one and that's my birthday gift. And then maybe I can pick two or three more for when the actual sale happens. So uh, 
question with that is do you pick the most expensive thing for your birthday or do you pick the cheapest thing for your birthday so it's like do i want to spend a lot of money for my birthday or do i want to spend a lot of money for the sale i don't know and in case you couldn't read my strange handwriting the list is mushroom and fern poison garden hawaiian mandala the beaded toadstool tile because that thing's just fun looking um, and then the Irish Mandala. Now that one was kind of a, I'm conflicted about that one. So that one's definitely not getting ordered for my birthday if I order one. Um, I'm conflicted on that one. Now, <laughs> this happens to me with Shadowlands. I'm sure the rest of you Shadowlands sisters feel the same. But, you know, Sh um, Martina died in 2017, I believe it was. So no new Shadowlands have been coming out since then. And it blows my mind. I study that site during every sale, meticulously picking the designs that I want to get. And then someone on the Chatelaine support group on Facebook will post a close up of a design that they're working on. And I'm like, oh my God, what design is that? I've never seen that before. And I'm like, how have I never seen this before? There's no new ones coming out. You keep you know, like, but some little, little glimpse of, I don't know, I don't know, like a tiny little crab on this design. And I'm like, oh my God, now I have to stitch that one. <laughs> that was kind of the Irish Mandala. Like looking, I, I, I just kind of scrolled past it. And I think too, it's got um, Celtic crosses on it and I'm not real big into crosses. So I think I didn't really look at it too much, but someone posted like their close-ups on it. And I was like, oh, I want that. <laughs> So I don't that and I'm I've got a lot of Irish heritage, so I think that'd probably be a cool one to do. So, but man, that's an expensive kit. That kit is, um, and the prices I have on these kits, it's for no fabric with the MPIs because I'm a silk slut, you know. And much as I like saving money, it kind of hurts my soul a little bit to not stitch the silk, like. It's not so much about the finished effect. It's more about the experience of stitching with silk. It's just so yummy. It slides through the fabric like butter. I love it. So most of these are full kit, no fabric, because I usually get a little bit creative with the fabric, a, a little bit, nothing too crazy with the Chatelaine, but I don't like using plain white for, for instance. So I never do the fabric, but for the Irish Mandala, for the full kit, no fabric, $349. That's a pricey one. <laughs> um, not as pricey as the Hawaiian Garden, though. That one is $409. And I'm thinking about that one being my birthday gift. <laughs> um, part of me is like, you know, whatever, spoil yourself. You've been working your butt off, which I seriously have been working my butt off. Like, my fingers just, mm. <laughs> like, ugh, they've been through some stuff. So, but yeah. And this is kind of my reward for you know, working hard. So Hawaiian might be my birthday gift to myself, which is funny. I've got plenty of other Chatelaines to stitch, but you know, like when there's a sale and when there's an excuse to buy a kit, why not? You know, so laissez-faire. Um, anyways, so that's my Chatelaine wish list. Um, that's the plans for kitting up some mirrors. Sorry, I don't have more stitching to show you aside from Serengeti, but you know, those little squares with all them quarter stitches, those were more time consuming, which I am no stranger to quarter stitches. You know, Teresa Wensler's got me plenty, you know, familiar with quarter stitches and I will tend to throw them in where they've been left out, where I think they make things look nicer. But these ones, they drive me a little crazy too, because part of it's being a Teresa Wensler stitcher. There's no back stitching around them. And I feel like when that happens, it leaves a lot more fabric exposed and just kind of looks a little unfinished. That's again, a Teresa Wensler holdover because she backstitched everything, which, you know, not complaining. I, if it looks better, I'll, I'll do it, you know, but man, those quarter stitches, I won't even show you the back. Like people that are into like <laughs> the backs and stuff like that you'd probably cringe if you saw them squares because I'd be damned if I was going to do two quarter stitches bury my thread do more quarter stitches bury no no we was carrying over now nothing I've seen look how big these squares are they're teeny tiny you know so maybe like I don't know eight eight threads I carried over I don't know but 
it wasn't a big enough deal to me so I carried over but yeah they're they're kind of messy looking <laughs> so yeah there's that um I will be probably starting this design before too terribly long because you know it's I feel the need to sprinkle in some non-selfish stitching you know within the stitching that and it's like the floss is all right here the chart's fairly simple you know it's just there's there's a lot of black right there so that's not gonna be a lot of fun but um yeah i'll probably start this one before too terribly long so that's what i got for today for you guys um but yeah um if you guys want to see anything on the this is how i do it videos feel free to leave a comment on something you'd like to see um again i'm planning on doing one on pretty much my scroll frame almost more like a review of the scroll frame because i know like sometimes when people are looking for new ways of stitching things they want to see how something works you know so it's not necessarily a review like buy this or don't buy this more like this is the issues you'll come across decide for yourself if that's a problem because i will say there are some scroll frame people that are really into drum tightness this particular brand which is the easy stitch which with has the velcro on the ends and you have to scroll these knot or tighten the knobs up basically i don't think this one would qualify for drum tightness you could probably get it with a little bit of elbow grease but not so much i think the omniac frame or something like that is better so but it just depends on what you want like that's not like a huge priority for me like you can see it's 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 fairly tight and that's that's good enough for me so it just depends on what you want so i think i'm going to make the um review or whatever you know kind of more here's what i think about this if you know you can decide for yourself if that's what you want so um yeah just just trying to post some helpful stuff you know instead of just sitting here and telling you guys all about all my whips and stuff like that so but hey at least i didn't talk too much about like sparkles today you know like i haven't shown you guys the sparkle hoard for a while so you got a little bit of a break from that so yeah um plans for mania that's that's something we should talk about since this year is going to be technically the last mania you know which is kind of sad but me like i kind of mania all the time like i always stitch whatever i want if i want to start something i'm going to start something i don't need to wait till may to do it you know so i kind of mania anyways but you know last year was kind of the first year i joined it so that's kind of sad you know like so this will be i guess i'll do something for it this year just because it's the last year but i know some other people are more into like they really start a lot of stuff in mania though i know a lot of people are doing no new starts for 2021 so maybe y'all will break that rule for that since this is the last mania but yeah i mean it's always fun to have like a theme so but yeah that's my thoughts on that so I will talk to you guys later and thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.